anything like me and are just thinking there might be some deals to be had out there we got a home here welcome to the go show celebrating all things outdoors in this beautiful outdoor playground of a state and world that we live in appreciate you hanging out um, go ahead and share this out with you with your peeps like it subscribe all of that uh, if you haven't been over to our youtube channel i need you to get over there asap toot sweet get over there don't pass go collect 200 all that get to youtube and uh if you're on youtube hey you're already here uh go ahead and subscribe and uh, and follow along will you I, I i greatly appreciate that so uh let's uh let's, let's get to moving yesterday I, if you didn't get to see it I, I was dealing with a little bit of a, a local home issue a domestic issue and i'll tell you I, I I channeled all of the farm boys that I know out here in the West Valley. My boy Slava would be uh, be pretty damn proud of me. Uh, is just you just get after it, get out and just go after it and just start muscling and manhandling this thing. And I fixed it. It's done just like that. It worked. I'm just surprised when it works. You just go ah! and then you go. <clears throat> yeah, I knew that. Yeah. I just know how to put a little put a little elbow grease in that. Nah, away we go. Slavo actually, and I'll tell the story uh, another time, but I uh, actually drove a trailer, my trailer, uh, pulled a trailer from Colorado back to Phoenix uh, that was held together in the axle with uh, the axle was held together with ratchet straps. Yeah, that's farm boy mentality. Just get after it. There is a way. There is a solution, especially in the outdoors. You can solve anything anytime just make sure you have some uh, duct tape and uh some some uh, not duct tape let's go with the gorilla tape fantastic uh then uh they, you have some ratchet straps as well and i will give the advertisement for the ratchet straps i mean oh my gosh the uh the the caterpillar ratchet straps at costco please next time you're at costco just grab them i don't even know how much they are i just grabbed it because I, okay if that can hold a trailer together do in slavo does not drive slow if that can hold a trailer together a wheel onto an axle for nine hours. Yeah, those are, I'm, I don't care how much I take my money. Take my, I'll get a second on the house if I need to just go take those. So uh, that, uh, that I, I appreciate all my peeps like, uh, like Slavo and, uh, and big game Judd for just kind of giving me that, uh, that, that, that kind of seed, especially when I was in property management, gave me that little seed of just start doing it. just, if you can't do it, if you, if you don't know how to do it, just start doing it what is up oh we we've checked bad companies oh man look at that we oh now we're now we're uh we're, we're, you know we're with the band <clears throat> yeah let's gonna see what up heathen how you doing my man uh thanks for chiming in too please uh please uh dance along the side there and uh and, and play with us and as we uh as, as we go through the show um here's here's the gig it's guide time for me i've got a seven west tag and it's it's really cool that I, I have that tag. I'm very excited to have that tag. And I'm going to give Tequila Jim some credit because Tequila Jim was told by yours truly, yeah, don't worry about it, dude. Don't worry, don't put it. Just just we'll get we'll get bonus points this year and just uh just man, we got so much going on and you know, we got a freezer full and you got a freezer full and just you know what? Hey, we're good. We're good. He's like, ah, let me go ahead and put us in. Boom, got it. Seven West Bowl, and this might be the last time, because I know how Arizona draw works, this might be the last time I get drawn for a bull elk. So I have made the decision that I am going to invest in a guide. Um, if anyone has, um, it, it, <laughs> you're not in the wrong account. It's fine, Eddie. You're good, dude. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you're just, it was, we're, we're with the band. Again, make us look cool. Yeah. If we, got, we got the band, you know, the bad company experience. I got to go check that out. It's awesome. Anyway. Um, if if anyone knows the guide, used guides in the past, please jump on the comments here and uh, and and help a brother out because I would love uh, to to interview them, check them out. Uh, there's some opportunities coming up at some banquets where uh, there's guide services that are going to be auctioned off, and there's companies I never even heard of guide services, people that I know that I've met that I have I had no idea that they guide. So I want to interview them, talk to them, and see uh, and, and see if we can get it because I I want somebody to put me on uh, put me on the uh, on the on the elk and if they can do it, they got the they got the resume and the and the price is right. Let's go. And again, I'm not trying to break the bank, and I and, and I encourage you to do the same. I, I have until November to save for this. So each check that comes in, a little bit gets set aside, a little bit gets set aside, a little bit get they get set aside, and then it becomes you know it, relatively affordable at that point and knowing that if i do put a solid rack on the wall um 
I'm putting in for cow from here on out, maybe even archery cow. My odds of getting drawn every year, or every other year go up exponentially because I'm not going after, I'm not going after the bone on the wall. I have the bone on the wall. I'm getting it this time. And then now I'm just going to focus on freezer and the elk camp experience. Pretty simple, right? But interviewing is so very important. Everybody's got a website. And one website I went to, I'm not giantly impressed with, but everybody's got a website. Uh, everybody has a, um, everybody has an Instagram page, a Facebook page. If they don't have any of those, by the way, um, either they are old school guide and maybe the best one you could possibly have. I don't need any of this technology. I don't need this, these little face spaces and all this fangled technology. We go and look at tree bark and we know where to go. Yeah, that might be the best guide in the world. You know, I put you on a 350 elk and just, you know, like, wow, I did. I did not know that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's what, yeah, exactly. Don't, uh, don't need the mount. I, I do actually, because uh, it's one of the few I'm missing. So I actually do need an elk and I, uh, I, what else do I need? I need a mule deer. I need a white tail and uh, moose. Yeah. Moose. Yes. Moose. I want the giant paddles. I'm a, I'm a Euro uh, mount guy. I like the skulls. And then the and just uh, the the, the skull the, I like I like skulls I'm a, I'm a big fan of skulls so um, just want that for the wall and then again it's off to the races uh, with meat but again it's important to interview ask for references talk to those people it's okay you're spending thousands of dollars for an opportunity right. So I'm not going to send you out to, you know, one of the casinos around the valley and say, yeah, dude, just throw a, you know, throw a few grand down there and, uh, and see what happens. No, I want to know, I want to be educated in what I'm going to spend this kind of money on. So do that. And that's any guide experience, by the way, him to say, I'd say I got experience on the head now that Eddie's over here with this in, in the wrong account. And yes, I would love a woolly mammoth. Yeah, you're right. If you missed it on the Brew Manchester, we're talking to Congressman David Schweikert about uh, about the development of the woolly mammoth, the reintroduction of the woolly mammoth. What could possibly go wrong? But I swear if there's a season, that and the dodo bird, let's go. I'm all about it. Let's make that happen. Let's reach it. Why don't I bring a megalodon back? Why why not? Just 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 bring a megalodon back, throw it in the ocean, and see what happens. Maybe you can replace the uh the the whale exhibit, uh, the orca exhibit at SeaWorld. Because no one's gonna feel bad for a megalodon. Oh, it's in captivity. No one's going to feel bad. Don't you notice that? No one feels bad for ugly animals. No one does. If I say I'm going hunting, oh, the, immediately the clutching of the pearls and oh, how oh, I don't. How can you kill such a beautiful creature? Um, because it, it tastes good. One and oh, that's so terrible. I'm like, I'm going hunting for javelina. Oh, oh yeah, those things are awful. They're so dirty and they stink. Oh, I get to hunt that. Here's the deal. If Disney didn't, if it wasn't a Disney character, you can hunt it. That's why if Disney wants to eliminate uh, hearts and minds for hunting uh, for generations, put every animal that is hunted in a movie. Every animal. <laughs> oh, come on, Eddie. Now we're not with the band. Now we're not cool. I want to be, I want to be with the bad company experience. So is it bad company experience or we just call it the bad co-experience? Just let me know on that one, by the way. I want to make sure that I'm giving, giving everybody the, the uh, yeah, bad company tribute. So I want to make sure it's bad co-experience or bad company experience. I want to be able to say that right. But it's funny that, uh, oh, yeah. I Actually, Rob Hunter. Rob Hunter, I'm going to throw him under the bus. Because I asked, I asked so many times for him to go hunting with me. We've been friends for 16, 17 years. And 16 years. So I I... I, I kept saying, you want to go hunting? Go, no, 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 no. Then I said, I'm going dove hunting. He goes, oh, yeah, I hate birds. Let's go. Let's go shoot some birds. I'm down with shooting birds. It's funny where people's lines are, and especially when it comes to hunting. And, he, and here's the deal, too. No one gives me grief about fishing. I go offshore and pull in a, you know, a 30-pound white sea bass, and everyone thinks, oh, that's cool. I bet that tastes really good. But I go and I, I go jackrabbit hunting. Oh. <gasps> It's so cute. It's got the big ears. That's so cute. It's cuddly. No, it's food. And I had a buddy of mine um, went down to Uruguay. I like throwing accents on things. Uruguay down for uh, uh, the Peace Corps. He was in the Peace Corps when uh, we were in our early 20s. Uh, he was my roommate, and he went down to the Peace Corps. And when he came back, 
it was a trip to me because I, you know, I was from, I was a Southern California kid. I, I really wasn't into the outdoors and hunting and fishing at that time yet. And so he, he was telling me about, about essentially the, the mind shift that he had to have when he went down to Uruguay and saw, uh, saw anything with four legs that was moving. That's food. Doesn't matter what it is. Yes. Cat. Yes. Dog. Yeah. Anything go. That's food. And chickens, obviously, with two legs, but you know what I'm saying. So this is a, a I, I wouldn't say uniquely American thing. It's just, it's, it's just, we, we, we have grocery stores. So, so many people think, well, why would you go hunt? You have a grocery store. Why would you go hunt? Because someone else hunted that. I'm going to say something that sounds a little bit crass here, but this is the state of the state of the, uh, the, the hunting world is that those that say I shouldn't be able to hunt or I shouldn't go kill a beautiful animal, they have someone else do that for them. And it ends up in the grocery store or it ends up in the farmer's market or it ends up in the, the butcher shop. Someone else had to take that animal. I just do it myself as much as I can, as best I can. I just do it myself. And there is a it's 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 such a more rich experience it's a richer experience to take that take your animal proteins by yourself it really is whether you farm chickens in the backyard and you have to take a chicken for um you have to sick them on a chicken zach brown style and there, there's that connection because it's been in your backyard for x amount of i don't know how long chicken left whatever when you're supposed to take a chicken i have no idea i'm not a farmer i just got a couple a little bit of that farm boy mentality but it was taught to me so you take a chicken, you, that chicken's been there. Now I'm going to take that and it's going to end up on my plate. There is a connection in, in several ways. There's a connection because uh, you took that. That is that is a, whether you care to admit it or not, hunters will tell you, at least honest hunters will tell you, it is a, it's a challenging experience when you take an animal. It just is. It, it's it's not something you want. You know, you're not out there to kill. You're out there essentially participating in life. And it's in, and to a lot of people, it's, it's a very sacred experience. So you take that chicken and it goes from, it goes from your backyard to the, it, it is way emotional, Eddie. And, and you go, it goes to, from Becker to your plate. I, I'll be, I'll, if, 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 if you don't mind, if you allow me a little bit, I'll, I'll tell you the first, uh, the first deer I took. The first deer I took was a, a very emotional experience. It's a very emotional experience because I've never hunted big game before. And I had a good, clear shot. And I probably rushed it. And I spine shot the deer. And I will never forget the moment that I had to, I was rushing to that deer. And I had to expire the deer. I had to, I had to take that. I did fire a second shot, point blank. I will never forget that moment. It is ingrained in me right now. I can see its eyes. That's challenging, but I'm going to tell you when I processed that deer and I prepared that deer for the table, the connection and experience became complete. And for me, that is a hell of a lot better than me getting a mailer from my local butcher off the hook, by the way, in the West Valley, fantastic. Um, getting no from my butcher saying, hey, we have a fresh supply of ground bison. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go grab some bison. That sounds great. No, they got a deal running on that. Let's go. But I have a freezer full of bison because I took a bison. And I have that connection and that experience. And you know something? I trust the folks over at Off the Hook. I totally do. But I trust me a lot more because I know where all of that meat has gone front to uh, front to my table field to my table yeah it is it is an absolutely it, it it's a it's a wild and fun and emotional and and it, it's more fulfilling there's a lot of meat i could buy at costco a lot of meat there's a lot of meat i could buy at the butcher shop i really 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 enjoy going and getting my own and forget about the i mean just not even including the experience of camp and elk camp and deer camp it's just it's it's a whole whole different boat. But I digress. Uh, looking for guides. Anyone uh, talk? I appreciate Eddie on the, the scout offer. I'm trying to eliminate that as well. I don't have time for darn near anything. 
Holy mackerel. Just go streaming. Take your st show streaming, they said. Hey, you should do it every day for like a half hour a day at 11 o'clock. It'd be, it'd be a great time. Whoo! A lot of work. <laughs> Not a lot of time to go running out and, uh, and, and, and goofing around and bouncing around in the forest and, and, um, and doing some things. Yeah, with the kids and the volleyball and the college and the... Uh, <laughs> A lot going on, uh, but I mean, I'm looking for a guide, and, uh, and so if anybody's got some uh, some some uh, some peeps, uh, some numbers that I'd like to, that you'd like to throw my way, just throw them in the comments, and I will go ahead and reach out to them. I will uh, credit you as well, tell that you have uh, recommended them, and uh, and I will go through my interview process. Here's the one thing that every guide will tell you, and I, I'm, I apologize. I'm trying so hard not to be that guy that uses every always. Uh, I could say the majority of time. The majority of guides that I have spoken with and I have asked the question, I've even seen Steve Rennell ask this question. That's why I asked this question. What's the number one reason for a lack of success in a hunt in your experience, not in your opinion, in your experience? Ready? It's not, it's, it's not a, it's not a good one. You, you might want to, you want to, you want to play it. La, 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 I'm not listening to Mike. Um, their client's physical fitness their client's lack of physical fitness. And I, I think that Under Armour nailed it years ago when they started an outdoor line and they their, their tagline or slogan, whichever you call it, I don't know the difference, for Under Armour hunting line is athletes hunt. I'm like, yes, this is a sport. This does take some time. That's why we hear all the him and hawn about, oh, that Jimmy John hunt. Oh, yeah, talk about Jimmy John again. And we do have to talk about Jimmy John again because he just bought another Arizona elk tag, auction elk tag, for $500,000. $500,000. I'd love to see that rack room. I I would love to see how he's got with you. He's got in his game room. Let me tell you that. Anyway, so Jimmy John was not it did not look like a portrait of athleticism. How about that? Okay. Um, and by the way, if I sell uh, one of my companies, sell this show for the money that he sold Jimmy John for and uh, Jimmy John's for the sandwich shop. I'm probably not going to be in peak condition for a hot minute because I'm going to be sitting my fat booty on my island somewhere with a line in the water. That's it. Yeah. So anyway, uh, Jimmy John was uh, taken out uh, uh, to the spot on a on a donkey. And he was taken to his uh, his elk on a donkey. And then had a lot of people there helping him harvest it. So people like, oh, it's because he was out of shape. No, it's because he has a lot of money. God bless him for doing it because uh, that guy already has put over a million dollars into on-the-ground conservation here in Arizona. God love him. Elk Habitat. You probably have a tag this season partially because of Jimmy John and the money he has put in to building healthier habitats for elk right here in the state of Arizona. So God bless him for doing that. But... Yeah, you could, if we're winning hearts and minds, you might want to put a little uh, time on the treadmill, maybe, uh, maybe a little time off horseback or donkey. So uh, that, might, that might help out just quite a bit. But here's me. Let me tell you about this. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. So I, I, I'm not saying I'm so in shape and I've been preparing for my hunt. I'm thinking about it. Girlfriend and I are going to, uh, to have a soup pie. So that's a heck of a hike. So I've got to start my training for this now i train a little bit differently than most people i think because i start early and oh and by the way after after i'm all done just a spoiler alert after i'm all done with the hunt or whatever i'm training for yeah there's weeks i don't even <laughs> where are those m&ms yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> that's it i'm like uh, ipa let's go let's get, get another, come on let's get another round uh, so the, um, the, my, my prog, my process is this, and it's not something you're going to find online. It is nothing that has been recommended by, uh, fitness experts or nutritionists. This is just who I am. And I think that it's, it's important for you to feel the same way because you are you, you're not me. You're not that dude online. That's just like, look at my guns and, you know, look at, my, I can bench 80,000 trucks at a time. You know, I'm, I'm a strong man competition. You're not that guy either. So be you. So here's me. Um, I will start if I if my goal is to do, I don't know, 100 pushups at a time. Okay. I literally, I've, I'm not kidding. I'll start with five. For two days. Then go to six. 
two days. Not kidding. Here's the reason. I want to see success and I don't want, and I want to see progress and I don't want to be sore. The worst thing in the world for me in training for anything, whether it's the have a uh, falls or it's, um, or it's a hunt. I don't want to be sore. If I get sore, I'm not going to continue my training. I'm going to sit out a few days and then the momentum's gone. It's toast. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to move forward with it. I'm just not. So it, it, everything is. So if I'm going to uh, be able to hike five, six, seven miles in a day, um, I better start with walking around the block a couple times. No more jumping on the bike to go to the mailbox, right? So I better start walking. And for archers, uh, another Slavo tip, uh, uh, archers, if you're going to walk to get ready for maybe you know, put on a few miles a night or whatever it is, get a small five-pound hand weight and carry that with you. Archers, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because you are carrying this bow and it becomes so awkward. And by the end of the day, after putting in six, seven miles on uneven terrain, your hand is tired. So condition your hand as well to hold that bow on your way. So it's a little tip as well. Um, and, and do your best to be on uneven terrain. If you walk on grass, walk on grass, walk on rock, walk on rock. Uh, if you're just straight urban, let's go ahead and uh, do one foot up on the curb, one foot down, one foot and on the way back, the other one helps out quite a bit, strengthens your legs and get your ankles and your knees ready for uneven terrain. That is my little pro tip. But I start with nothing, darn near nothing. A few walks around the block. Maybe I just walk out to the golf course and back, or maybe I, um, you know, uh, walk to my girlfriend's that's three miles away. So that's it. And then back that is. So I'm putting in in 24 hours, I'm putting in a, a six and a half, seven miles. So that's, that's just the beginning to start the process of training for whatever it is. It starts tiny, really tiny. And then it goes up increments in small little increments. And before you know it, you're turning around laughing at yourself. And, I, and I've done this several times. Because, again, once I get to what I'm training for, afterwards, let's hit the buffet. Um, so when I start over again, I whatever, I'm 48 years old. I, I've, I've earned this, right? I've earned this dad bod. This dad bod is a, an investment. So where was I even going with that? Holy mackerel. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, I heard buffet. I, I said the word buffet and I thought, Oh my gosh, I'm getting hungry. I, yeah. I'd like to get something to eat, but, uh, but think of it. So you, uh, soon enough, you'll be turning around and looking and going, Oh my gosh, I remember when I couldn't do 20 pushups and I just busted 60 out right there. So you're not sore. You're incrementally jumping up and it's just going to be so much better for you. And, and if people tell you, especially out here in the, the West Valley, go to the Verado stairs. I'm like, what? Okay. I will probably a month before we go, because I'll probably be in shape to do that. But I'm sure as heck not going to start at that level. There's just no way. It just no way. I think that's kind of a lesson for anything we do really, right? It's a lesson. Uh, it's if maybe kayak fishing, we've talked about several times over the last eleven years. Kayak fishing. Start with a basic kayak, just basic. Don't even don't put any accessories on that. Go fishing a couple times. Find out the accessories you need. Start slow, and then grow. That rhymed. I'm gonna write that down. Start slow, and then grow. <laughs> Yes, but it is time to start the training. Uh, Slavo is, and I know, I'm, I'm sorry, I've mentioned him several times. My very good friend, Slavo, he's the proprietor of Slavo Salt. Get over to slavosalt.com. Use the code GOSHOW. It is going to get you, uh, it's going to get you, uh, so did you, wait, wait a second. What is that? Hold on, I got to see what he just did. Hold on, hold on. Eddie, Eddie just said something. I'm not going to put my glasses on because he sent me an emoji. Okay, it's the hand doing this. Woo! I thought it was the hand doing this. You know what I mean? He's calling me number one. I know. Okay, so um, SlavoSalt.com, code go show gets you, uh, it's get you, uh, I believe, 10% off your order. So uh, it is, it's, it's it. I, I don't cook without it. I do not cook without it. Uh, Easter devil egg, deviled eggs, Slavo. Slavo deviled eggs. It's that good. Not kidding. I cooked with it into the yolks and actually sprinkled it on before I put the yolks down in the, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was that good. So uh, anyway, Slavo, a big kettlebell guy as well. Um, I, was, I, I found some cool kettlebell workouts I've been doing with dumbbells, but now that I'm kind of advancing, I'm like, I just not working with the dumbbells. So I went right before this show. I'm not kidding. I'm not going to say the store that I went to because I don't want to throw them under the bus. 
I really don't. Uh, but uh, but it rhymes with big five. So, yeah. So I went there and I I just grabbed a, I grabbed a, a, a twenty five pound kettlebell because I wanted to try that one. Try twenty five pounds first and maybe get a thirty or two twenty fives or whatever. But I wanted to start with one again. Start small. Don't just go buy a bunch of stuff and then see what you need. I want to start with one and I'm going to see how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it with a twenty five pound kettlebell. I put it down on the on the register. Not lying. This this wonderful young lady says uh, that's seventy dollars and thirty four cents. I'm sorry, what? How many kettlebells come with this? Is there a subscription that comes with this? Do I get a gym membership? $70? Well, yes, they're, they're 68 is about 67, whatever, plus I'm like, uh, uh, no. What? I was like, you know, so I really appreciate that. I'm not trying to be a jerk, but I'm not going to get fleeced for a kettlebell. And I could go to Amazon or Target and just be be good in the hood. Holy mackerel. I was like, dang, you was running up on it. And it was it wasn't like a cool one that like it had padding or something in case you drop it. My house is all tile. I'm really nervous about having a kettlebell out there, but but uh, but you know, nothing. It was just lead. Just a metal kettlebell. Seventy dollars. Oh, yeah. So I guess I was 60, so it was probably 64.99 or something like that with taxes. I mean, I'm like, what in the world is that? I'm like, is this a 50 pounder? Does this have adjustable weight? Wow. But speaking of purchasing, uh, before we wrap up, I, and thank you so much for playing with us. I, I just, I absolutely love it. I love having you guys here and I love you, you guys playing along with me here. This is the Go Show. I'm your host, Mike Russell. Appreciate it. Right now for your hunts, this is the best time to shop. Get out there and inventory what you need for your elk hunt, what you need for the winter hunts. Go inventory those, even for the bird hunts. Now is the time to do that. Clothing, gear, all of that. Why? Because all that stuff's going on sale. All that stuff's going on clearance because now it's time to get ready for the retail stores. Now it's time to get the bathing suits out there, the life vests out there, all of the summer equipment, the boating equipment, and the fishing equipment. The hunting section just kind of gets gets thrown over there into the corner, and then uh, and then you're just yeah yeah whatever. And that's if you shop retail uh, at a at brick and mortar store. The online places are just running deals left and right. Look for those you know look for those little red marks and like twenty percent off. It's not like when you go to Kohl's and you buy a t shirt and they're like here you are sir you saved sixty four dollars. I'm like why I bought a t shirt sixty four dollars. <laughs> It's like it's like glamour pricing is what it is. You go home and you're like, oh no 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 no, don't worry. I, I just I saved sixty four dollars. Save sixty four dollars. Did now I can go get that guy. See, <laughs> see how I bring that all around. But get out there and find the stuff that you need. Get out to your garage. Get in your camping boxes. Get all of that stuff right now, and find out what you need for your hunts. What you what you've been missing. What has holes in it. What what can be replaced. And any of that stuff right now. Is starting to go on sale. I'm just a, I'm an opposite season buying kind of guy. So during the uh, the fall hunts, that's the time to buy fishing equipment. That's the time to buy camping equipment. It just is. And I'm talking about summer camping equipment, like cool, like you know, beach games and and those kinds of things like that. You know what? Is? I'm going to put this down. Let's talk about beach camping tomorrow. What do you think about that? Because I tell you what, I love me some camping, and I found some cool places out here that I'm not going to tell you about. I'm kidding. Of course, I'm going to tell you about them. And uh, and we'll talk about uh, some cool summer ideas to, to plan, to, to really start planning, because I am the worst planner. I'm writing this down. See? Uh -huh. Yeah, fail to plan. Plan to fail. Um, I will talk about planning tomorrow, uh, planning for outdoor adventures, because there are some things that you can do and I can do and start to practice what I preach a little bit. And we can uh, we can have some cool outdoor adventures and really plan for them. And this is one that kind of goes back to what I was talking about, with the fitness. <laughs> fitness taco tuesday in my yeah, no the uh the fitness that i was talking about was you just you have to plan for it just set out a plan just just i mean it's not something you have to stick to religiously but if you stick to a pretty loose guidelines a pretty loose plan all the way to your hunt let me tell you something you're not going to run into what the guides say is the number one reason why hunts are unsuccessful and that is of course the lack of physical fitness from their uh uh from their uh, their clients yeah, those that they're guiding around. They're guidees, if you will. All right, let's get to this here. Uh, oh, let's see here. I really enjoyed yesterday's show. Oh, yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, 
you just got a kayak and you're going to head up north and do some uh, do some kayak fishing. Uh, again, don't buy a bunch of accessories. Don't look at the guy next to you with with all of this out. Like Brian Sefji, God bless him. If you ever see him on one of the chain lakes out there, uh, his his little ranch looks like it's a like it gets HBO. It's like a thirty five inch TV on the thing. He's got why he's got a it's a hot spot. He's got Wi Fi, and I love him for it. But he didn't start that way. So start out basic, and then just go ahead and uh, and, and move into the accessory world. But tomorrow, I'm very excited about this. Let's talk about some planning for some outdoor adventures. Let's, uh, let's get really, I mean, from from camping to hunting. Uh, let's talk about over the counter tags. Let's talk about it all. Let's get let's get it done. Setting some plans, setting some goals, getting with the family and getting the family on board and getting the kiddos involved. How about that? That's going to be on tomorrow's show right here, eleven o'clock, wherever you're watching us. And again, get over uh, to, uh, get over to uh, YouTube if you could subscribe, uh, share this stuff out, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow at eleven o'clock right here on the Go Show. Have a great afternoon, everyone. <laughs>